According to the Quran, the worst possible sin is shirk, associating partners with Allah. Surah 4, verse 48 reads, Allah forgiveth not that partners should be set up with him, but he forgiveth anything else to whom he pleaseth. To set up partners with Allah is to devise a sin most heinous indeed. Shirk, in Islamic terminology, means associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is shirk and is the biggest sin. There are lots of ways to commit shirk. You don't have to actually bow down and worship other gods. Muhammad tells us, for instance, that if you swear by something other than Allah, you've committed shirk. If you say, I swear on my mother's grave, you are guilty of shirk. We find this in all six of Islam's most trusted collections of ahadith. Let's look at a few passages. Sahih al-Bukhari, 6108. Allah's Messenger said, Verily, Allah forbids you to swear by your fathers. If one has to take an oath, he should swear by Allah or otherwise keep quiet. Sahih Muslim, 4040. Allah's Messenger said, He who has to take an oath, he must not take an oath but by Allah. Sunan Abu Daud, 3242. The Apostle of Allah said, Do not swear by your fathers or by your mothers or by rivals to Allah and swear by Allah only, and swear by Allah only when you are speaking the truth. Sunan An-Nasai, 3795, The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever swears, let him not swear by anything other than Allah. Sunan Ibn Majah, 2095, The Messenger of Allah said, Do not take oaths by idols, nor by your forefathers. Jamiat Termidi, 1534, the Messenger of Allah came across Umar while he was on his mount, and he was swearing by his father. So the Messenger of Allah said, Verily, Allah prohibits you from swearing by your fathers. So let the one who swears, swear by Allah, or be silent. Now, why is it wrong to swear by something other than Allah? Muhammad tells us in Jamiat Termidi 1535, Ibn Umar said, Nothing is sworn by other than Allah, for I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Whoever swears by other than Allah, he has committed disbelief or shirk. Whoever swears by other than Allah, he has committed disbelief or shirk. According to Muhammad, anyone who swears by something other than Allah has made it a partner of Allah. He's committed shirk, the worst possible sin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man halafa bi ghayrillah faqad ashraka aw kafar. Whoever swears by other than Allah, he has committed shirk or disbelieved. So the worst sin, according to Surah 448 of the Quran, is shirk. And Muhammad tells us that you commit shirk when you swear by something other than Allah. Clear so far? Awesome. Now that we understand how shirk works, let's have some fun, shall we? In the Quran, Allah swears over and over again by the Quran. Surah 36.2, I swear by the Quran, full of wisdom. 38.1, I swear by the Quran, full of admonition. 43.2, I swear by the book that makes things clear. 51, I swear by the glorious Quran. Allah swears by the Quran. But Muhammad said that when you swear by something other than Allah, you're making it a partner with Allah. Therefore, the Quran is Allah's partner. That shouldn't be surprising, of course, since Muslims tell us that the Quran shares one of Allah's attributes. The Quran is eternal, according to Islam. So we might expect Allah to make this eternal book his partner. But Allah isn't done. He also swears by Muhammad's life. Surah 1572, Verily, by thy life, O Prophet, in their wild intoxication they wander in distraction to and fro. And he says, La amruka innahum lafi sakratihim ya'manun. Oh, my beloved Prophet, I swear by your life. This is what Allah says. I swear by your life. Allah swears by Muhammad's life, making Muhammad a partner with Allah. This shouldn't be surprising either, since Muslims obviously don't treat Muhammad like a human prophet. Draw a picture of Moses, no Muslims right. Draw a picture of Muhammad, someone has to die. Now it all makes sense. Muhammad is Allah's partner. But Allah has angelic partners too. Surah 77.5 I swear by the angels who bring down the revelation. 
79.1, I swear by the angels who violently pull out the souls of the wicked. Allah swears by the angels. And since Muhammad said that when you swear by something other than Allah, you've set it up as a partner with Allah, we can only conclude that angels are Allah's divine partners. Allah must have been quite lonely, though, because at the end of the day, he made all kinds of partners. Surah 81.15, I swear by the stars. 85.1, I swear by the mansions of the stars. 56.75, I swear by the falling of the stars. 91.1, I swear by the sun and its brilliance. 91.6, I swear by the earth and its expanse. 74.32, I swear by the moon. 89.1, I swear by the daybreak. 84.16, I swear by the sunset redness. 92.1, I swear by the night when it draws a veil. 86.11, I swear by the rain-giving heavens. 51.1, I swear by the wind that scatters far and wide. 91, I swear by this city, i.e. Mecca. 68.1, I swear by the pen. 52.1, I swear by the mountain. 89.3, I swear by the even and the odd. 95, 1 through 3, I swear by the fig and the olive and Mount Sinai and this city made secure. Wow. That's a lot of partners you've associated with yourself there, Allah. When you swear, you're trying to mention the importance of the one you're swearing by. And anything that is created, created is insignificant when compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. So then we don't swear by anyone but Allah. But it gets even worse. In Surah 69, 38 through 39, Allah says, I swear by that which you see and that which you do not see. Allah swears by everything that's seen and everything that's unseen. But guess what? That's everything. And if Allah swears by absolutely everything, then everything is a partner with Allah. This means, of course, that Islam isn't actually a monotheistic religion. It's some kind of strange, polytheistic, pantheistic hybrid. If you break any one of the three categories of Tawheed, it is called a shirk. Think about the implications here. Allah swears by what you see. Do you see this pig? Allah swears by it, and Muhammad says that when you swear by something other than Allah, you've made it Allah's partner. So Allah has made this pig his partner. Are you Muslims ready to worship the cute little swine? Muslims complain about how women dress in America. Some Muslim leaders compare Western women to uncovered meat in a butcher shop window. Speaking of uncovered meat and scantily clad women, here's Lady Gaga wearing a dress made entirely of meat. You Muslims may not like Miss Gaga or her attire, but let's face it, Allah swears by Lady Gaga and by her meaty dress, and the meat probably isn't even halal. So the next time you Muslims pray, make sure you don't forget about Allah's partner, Lady Gaga, or Allah's other partner, the 50 pounds of beef she was wearing. Allah swears by everything seen and unseen. He swears by dogs, and alcohol, and crack cocaine, and pornography, and the herpes virus, and used menstrual cloths, and toilets, and what's in toilets, and yes, Allah swears by Satan himself. And when Allah swore on these things from all eternity in his eternal partner, the Quran, he associated all of them with himself, committing more shirk than the worst Meccan polytheist could ever dream of. Shirk, according to Islam, is the worst blasphemy and it is the unforgivable sin. There's no way to get back from that. But we're not quite done because according to the Quran, the more knowledge you have of right and wrong, the greater your guilt if you sin. Surah 2 verse 22 reads, Do not set up rivals to Allah while you know. While you know, i.e. if you know better. This is why Muhammad's companions, who started off as pagans, could be forgiven of their shirk. They didn't know any better. The more knowledge you have, the more responsible you are. But Allah's knowledge is supposedly greater than anyone else's, which means that Allah knew exactly what he was doing when he set up literally everything as his partner. Allah, unlike a Meccan pagan, can't appeal to ignorance. 
Now, let's put all of this together. Shirk is the worst possible sin. You commit shirk when you swear by something other than Allah. Since Allah swears by everything seen and unseen, Allah has committed more shirk than anyone else. And because Allah knows more than anyone else, He's more responsible than anyone else when He commits the worst possible sin over and over and over. According to Muhammad and the Quran, then, Allah is the worst sinner, the most wicked idolater, the most despicable mushrik who's ever existed. And my Muslim friends tell me to bow down and worship him. This is a pattern I've been noticing in Islam. On the surface, some of Islam's teachings seem wonderful. Believe in God, pray, fast, give to charity. Awesome, where do I sign up? But as soon as you dig just a little deeper, as soon as you scratch the surface, you find blasphemy. Believe in our God, who happens to be the worst sinner imaginable, according to his own book and his own prophet. Can't sign up for that, my Muslim friends. But if you ever come up with a God who isn't the world's most prolific idol maker, 